I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. Last month's deadly school shooting in Parkland, Florida, sparked a national student movement to stop gun violence. This weekend, survivors from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School joined students from all over the country in rallies to keep the pressure on Congress. They're calling on lawmakers to take action from banning assault weapons and high capacity magazines to universal background checks. And these students aren't slowing down. Another school walkout is already planned for April 20th on the anniversary of the Columbine school shooting back in 1999. Calling themselves the mass shooting generation, this movement has united students from urban, suburban, and rural neighborhoods. Imani Holt is a junior at Baltimore's Excel Academy in Maryland, and Daniel Meekum is a senior at McLean High School in Virginia. It's so nice to have both of you with me. Mm -hmm. You guys go to school not too far from each other, so you're about 12 miles outside of Washington, D.C., and you're about uh, 38 miles out of Washington, D.C. So you're you're kind of on opposite sides, but you're you're not, you know, super distant from each other. Um, do you feel that the tension has been appropriate for what's been happening in your neighborhood and in your school, Imani? My school in particular, we lost eight kids. To gun violence. To gun violence. In their neighborhood, not within the school. Yeah, in their neighborhood. But it's like, it affects the school because these are kids that we go to school with, we see them every day. So I feel like it's bringing a little bit of tension. Now, but yeah. at the time... The news would come to our school be like, you probably get 15 seconds on camera. But it wasn't like really a big conversation about it. So it's not like a mass shooting. It's just like because they passed away in their neighborhoods. It's interesting, right, that there's this um, difference yeah. in how it's covered. You've had eight classmates yeah. die in the last 15 months. And uh, when I read that, I was stunned. I, I, I had no idea it's not really been seen as this national right. tragedy in the way that the Parkland mass shooting yeah. has been seen. Is that frustrating for you? Yeah, it's frustrating sometimes because it's like, we want the same kind of attention, like, not like we are like saying, like, we don't feel bad for them, but we like shine a light on us too. Like we lost eight kids, so. Now your school is interesting because you have, thank God, not had any tragedies to report on, which is, excellent news, but there are lots of conversations about what they should do within the walls of your school now. Yeah, I think there was a big um, shift in, in kind of the overall level of tension at the school after this Parkland shooting because of the fact that the school in Parkland was kind of a similar school to us, and we realized that we're not really any safer than they were, um, and that's kind of led a lot of people to become a lot more nervous about the violence in schools than they had been in the past. Are you nervous about it? What I'm more nervous about is the fact that this is going to continue around the country. So whether or not I'm personally affected by it, there are going to continue to be people who are affected by these shootings um, unless something is done about it. So let's talk a little bit about what the something to be done is. What would be the recommendations that, that you would have? We should have better gun laws. 18-year-olds in certain states can have guns, can have access to guns. I feel like that's just the dumbest law ever because why should, why what does an 18 year old need for, need for a gun? You're not in the army, you're not a police officer. What do you want for a gun? I think we definitely need to make sure we try to get to an assault weapon ban because when you think about it, assault weapons have no place in civilian life. I mean, they are designed for assault. They're designed for the military and there's really no reason that a, that a civilian should be able to have an assault rifle and they've been used in all these recent school shootings are you hopeful? I mean, when we're having this conversation five years from now, again, sitting right here, how old will you guys be? You're 18 now? Yeah. You're 18. Mm -hmm. All right, so you'll be 23. Mm -hmm. I'll be 30. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Um, so we're back in five years. What, do you, what, what will have changed? Uh, I want to say that I'm cautiously optimistic because whether people remember this when they go to the voting polls in, in 2018 and 2020, whether they they actually decide to make this an issue that matters to them and choose their candidates based on who is going to make change in the gun laws. Before the Parkland school shooting, did you think about gun violence all the time, Daniel? It had been a concern of ours, but the Parkland shooting really made it clear to us how vulnerable we ourselves were. And you'd had multiple students killed yeah. in 15 months. I live in the inner city, so it's like you always hear gunshots. You always watch somebody passing away. Like, oh, I hope this not me next. If I'm coming home late, see a group of guys want to cross this other side of the street, specifically in my, they might have guns. So it's fair to say it's just constantly on your mind? Yeah, it's constantly. 
Amani Holt and Daniel Meekum, thank you so much for joining us to, to talk about this issue. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you.